Okay. We're closing doors. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay. So let's get started. I'm going to talk very briefly, only 25 minutes, about how to meet with, uh, how to work with clients you've never met in person. Let me first kind of introduce myself. Uh, I have an outsourcing firm. We do multilingual um, uh, services, so like content translations, validation, content creation, SEO work. And uh, all my clients are, they're the little hearts. They're spread out through the world. And I have only met half of my clients. The same way the little uh, lighthouses, they're my team. They're the people I work with. And out of about 230 people that work with me, I've met seven of them during seven years that I've been in business. So really, I, 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 I'm the living proof that it's possible to work remotely and uh, never see neither your clients or your team members. So I'll share with you now some of the, the experience that I have gained during these years. Um, let me talk to you briefly about the profile of the project. So even though we do very different things, I don't do design, I don't do development, but we have a lot of similarities. My projects, I want them to be long-term. Uh, the, the clients are long-term. So I want clients to be very happy, to keep giving me work, and uh, to um, just keep uh, working with me so I don't have to sell, because I think that none of us really like to sell. So uh, I want long-term clients, and my projects are all short-term. So I'm talking about six months projects, nine months, and then we keep doing one after the other. All the deadlines that we have are very tight, and I think this is where we can agree. You probably also have very tight deadlines. And um, my teams are made of people, um, five to eight people in each team. So I need to make sure that there's no surprises. There can be a minimum number of surprises. I want everything to run really smooth. I want to get all the information from the client, and I want to be delivering fast and with no stress, because nobody likes to be stressed. So we are in this situation. I think that we are in this situation together. We have a client. We've never met the client. We are never going to meet the client, and we need to get their trust. When we work in an office, it's really simple because we go into the office and we start building trust from day one, because we see people, because we have coffees with them, because we sit next to each other, because we share experiences, because we go get beers with them. But when we're working remotely, we need to build trust in other ways. So here what I'm asking you to do is to do a complete mind change from what you know what it's like to work in an office, then what it's like to be uh, probably your freelancers working from home or from co-working spaces and having clients that you have never met in person. So during the talk today, we will see different strategies to build trust and to show your value to the clients so they, get, they keep coming to you and they spread the word. First thing, we only trust the people we know. We cannot trust a person if we don't know who they are. So it is your task as a freelancer to explain who you are. The first thing is with references, very easy. Um, you work with a client, they have a friend that needs something similar, and then they hire you. Okay, you have part of the work done, but there is something that you need to do. You always need to uh, present yourself, explain who you are. So number one recommendation for today, when you start a job, no matter if you already talk to the HR person and you tell them who you are and you show them your portfolio, uh, it doesn't matter if you already did that. Once you start uh, the, day, the day one and you start uh, talking to the person that is going to be uh, giving you all the work, either it's the project manager, management, or um, the client, whoever it is, you need to talk about yourself. You need to introduce yourself. What have you done before? Why you like that job? Why that project is perfect for you? And you need to do this on day one, because on week two, it doesn't make no sense that you start doing that. You want to build the trust from the beginning. And the only way to start doing that is to show people who you are and why you're there, and where you're coming from. Something else that we need to do, and this is a little bit hard, I know, it's to get personal. Why do we need to get personal? Because when crises come, we will need to have a smooth relationship. We want um, 
that the client sees us not only as a service provider, but also as a person. We want to have some kind of attachment with that client. And how do we get personal if they are in San Francisco? Well, it's a little bit <laughs> complicated. I'm not asking you to be best friends with them. I'm not asking you to ask them questions that might be very personal, like, do you have kids? Are you gay? No, you don't have to go to these kinds of questions. Uh, what I do is I give information about myself. So in a conversation, I will say, oh, I'm getting my sailing license and see if there's any feedback. Oh, I'm reading this book, or I'm watching this show, or this weekend I'm going hiking. And then normally, by me providing information about myself, then the client also um, gives some information and starts sharing a little bit of their personal life, or at least their environment. What we're looking for here is that they have a picture of what's around us. They know that we're, we're very good professionals, but we want them to know that what's around us, so they can see us as a person. So when they need to communicate things that are hard to us, they know how to do it. So we have a connection with them. We're not machines. So get personal and give a little bit of information about yourself during the talks that you have with a client. Always try to introduce to that small talk, because you would do it if you were in an office. If you were in an office, you would be walking to the meeting room and you would be talking about the weather, about what you did last weekend. So even if you are working remotely and you're miles from them, also try to establish that personal connection with them. And humanize all the interactions that you have with clients. Now, hopefully, you're using less meetings and more collaboration tools. I hope you are, <laughs> for your own good. Um, humanize when, when you have interactions with them, when you are chatting. Uh, always put a little introduction. Use icons. Um, use uh, your avatar, you know, make it fun, make it a little bit easier because we're working, we're working so many hours. So just smooth it up a little bit and you will start building that trust. And if you do have meetings, use video because it's the most direct way. It's the closest way to shaking hands with somebody. You can look at each other in the eyes, you can... Um, see what's around them, you can see what their office is like, you can establish an easier connection, let alone that you can use body language, especially if you're from Spain like me, we need to do everything with the hands. So um, let's not skip all those parts, um, and using video will help you. Later on, we'll, if we have time, we'll see uh, what happens when we, people don't use video, which is really funny. Of course, first thing you have to do when you're working with a client you have never met is gather information. Clients, they think they give you information. <laughs> they give you these, these files that they have prepared, but it's only their side of the story. From my experience, once I, once I get that information, what I have to do is uh, look at it, stop, and think, okay, this is what they're asking me. Now, what are all the steps that are going to follow? How are things going to be structured? What are the deadlines going to be? And when I do this extra work is when I find problems. And the clients might think that you're like a pain in the butt because, because you're asking all these questions at the beginning, but uh, really what you're doing is anticipating possible problems. And I think that in the long run, that's going to be very positive. So I would say, ask as many questions as you can. Of course, think of all the cases and think about how you're bringing value, how you're helping the project, and express that in writing. Um, because when you are working in the same office, it's very easy to clarify things, to go to your boss and say, hey, you mentioned this in the meeting. Um, it was, that, was I right? But if you're working remotely, things are much harder. So all the things that you can document them, put them in writing. And if you don't document them, because sometimes it's kind of boring to have to write everything, have meetings. And in these meetings, check that all the information that you understood is correct. So use all the tools that are available today. There's whiteboards, there's presentations that you can do, there's collaboration tools, and use all that to check that the information that you understood and the planning that you have thought out is really what the client means. 
it feels a little bit like a repetition, but uh, working distributed, it is about repeating because we need, there's a gap of communication that is missed and we need to use tools to catch up and, and fill up this gap that happens. Um, this is a very similar slide. If you were here uh, in Emmanuel's uh, talk about uh, users first, this is the same idea. We got a lot of our clients. Our clients are not professional at what we do normally. They come to us because they want expertise. So we have to have extra patience with them. We have to love them. We have to not go to our... Um, friends and while we have a beer complain about our clients. If we have something to say to our client, we have to go and, and say it, you know, have a meeting, have a talk and say, I don't like how you're doing this or I don't like how you're doing that. But always I would ask you to think about your clients, if you, even if you've never met them, to think and to love them. Um, we need to teach our clients because they don't know how we do our work and what the best way to do our work with. I think that probably the designers can relate very well to this. I don't know what I want, but I will, I'll know when I see it. Th th that's not an instruction. <laughs> that is just, I want something or my, my competition does something. So we need to help our clients find out what they want. And you are the expert. So I'm here to say that you should always think like one, you have studied, you have the experience, you've been in other projects. So always, when you are in front of a client that you have never met, explain and, and be very confident about the services that you're providing. Clients from the United States are not coming to Croatia uh, because they want machines. They want professionals that have experience and that have a minimum cultural difference between them. If they wanted machines, they would go to other places in the world. So keep this in mind. They're coming to Croatia or, or to this area of Europe. Yes, because you're cheaper, but also because uh, it's very similar to what they would have at home. So keep this in mind. You are the experts. Stay strong with your opinions and give them tools. Clients don't know uh, if you like to use Slack or, well, some do. If you have a good project management, then they do. But if they don't, then uh, you should tell them all the tools that you like to use and show them all the benefits that these tools are going to give them. So when a client is far from you, give them uh, help with... Uh, and tell them the benefits that they will get from using the tools that you're comfortable with. Um, that is my advice. Uh, you need to repeat. You have already noticed this. If you are uh, working remotely, you need to have extra patience and repeat things because you cannot uh, just, you know, while you're getting water in the office, confirm that you understood something right. No, you need to repeat things. You need to have more patience. And um, it's very hard to ask questions. Uh, I, I guess you have noticed that. Um, when you're in an office, it's really easy to go to somebody and clarify something. But if you're remote, asking questions, it's a little bit uncomfortable. So I would say uh, be confident with yourself and uh, try to find the right, ch right channel. So you will have different kinds of tools that you're using. Try to figure out which, in what tool it's better to ask those questions. And have patience when you communicate. You will need to repeat things and you will need to do what I call super communication. And super communication is three things. Communicate better, so be more assertive. We'll look at an example in a few seconds. Uh, communicate more and diversify the channels. This is what I call super communication. Communicate better, communicate more, which means really repetition, the repetition, creative repetition in different ways. And then um, diversify the channels when you give out the information. And finally, something that clients really, really enjoy and that I recommend that you do, if you don't already run retrospectives and similar meetings, is to periodically put in your agenda, how am I going to improve this uh, project that I'm working on. So have a moment, have half an hour to think about the improvements and then don't just do them, 
show your client. I took the time to, to think about how I would improve the project, and now I'm teaching you what I'm going to do and what we should change. So improvement should always be in your, in, in your work. Uh, about being assertive. It's great to be direct. It's great to be... Um, uh, yes, <laughs> direct, uh, but you, we always need to smooth out relations a little bit. And we need to be nice with our clients and we need to say things in a good way. So, as homework, what I would like you to do on Monday when you go back to your office and you write the first email or you write the first chat message is to uh, do it in an assertive way. And assertive means being strong about what you think and communicating that and not changing your mind but um, communicating it in a non-aggressive way, in a way that is uh, positive and you're not hurting anybody. So even if you would like to write this message, there's no way that the project will be done on time if we do what you're saying. Um, it should be something like, according to my experience, if we want to meet the deadline, we should first start with blah, blah, blah. So explaining the benefits and being uh, non-aggressive. And my recommendation is that on Monday, before, so you write the message, and before you hit send, you read all the sentences you wrote, and you rewrite them to make sure that they are not aggressive, that you're not hurting anybody, and that uh, everything you're saying is constructive. If you do this at the beginning, it's a little bit like I'm losing my time, but then your brain rewires itself, and you automatically write the messages in an assertive way. And I mentioned this, and it's a full slide, because when you're working remotely with people you have never met, it's very easy to encounter misunderstandings. And probably the most effective way uh, to avoid that is to be very conscious about the, the communications that we're having. And this exercise helps us with that. And of course, always explain the benefits. Clear expectations. Expectations, all of you know, is when things start going wrong. If expectations are not clear, things start going bad. So have clear expectations uh, through the entire project. Share everything uh, in writing. Share your plan, the delivery dates. There's something that always happens to clients. They get nervous. They don't know if you've been working or not. They get paranoid. They cannot see you. They cannot contacted you, contact you. So always, if you set delivery dates, make those deliveries um, and, and don't leave your client like in, in a blind spot. Always keep them in the loop. Not too much, eh? not too much. And again, be confident in your knowledge and experience, and if you need to, say no. Now communication. So we have this client that's on the other side of the world, and we need to establish some bridges of communications. So far, when I have been talking, I've been saying that you are the expert, that you're the professional, you need to stay strong, be assertive, but stay strong with your opinions, show them the tools. Okay, be strong with everything, but with communication, you need to be flexible. Because if you cannot build this bridge with them, uh, nothing is going to flow. Uh, communication is number one thing. So you will need to be flexible. I have clients that I've been working for four years. I've never heard their voice because they want to do everything via email. Okay, that's what they choose. I have other clients that I send them an email with a question, and they don't, they, they don't reply to me. They call me. Okay, this is what they prefer. So adjust. Because otherwise, if you make them use the tools, if you make them use the channels that you want and you are not flexible with that, you will be missing information. So communication is the only place where I would ask you to adapt. Um, we talked about this. Um, when you have questions, which of course you will have, uh, my recommendation is that you don't send them all like in different messages or in using different tasks or opening different tickets. My uh, recommendation is that you always try to group them because go and think about what the client wants. The client wants an expert. They're outsourcing a task to somebody that is, uh, is, is the, the expert. It's not part of their team and they are trusting you. So the more you can resolve the questions uh, yourself and the more you can um, put them in like little packages, I think the 
the easier it will be for the client. Be very available because when you are, um, if you have clients here in Zagreb or in your town, they can always come to your door and say, hey, you haven't delivered what you said. But if uh, they are far from you, they, they're, they're blind, they're, they don't know what's going on. So always be very available to them. Never leave an email uh, unanswered, even if it's, oh, I'll get back to you in 10 days. That's fine, but always answer, because otherwise clients get super nervous. And stay on top of all your communications. Uh, if you want long-term clients, you need to feed the relationship that you'll have with them. Of course, gaining new skills, telling them about them, uh, and making things a little bit personal, as we say. Break the digital barrier. Be a little bit creative. Send them postcards. Send them geeky things. Send them things that they will that they will think are amazing. It surprised them because they're used to knowing that you're on the other side of the computer. If you break the digital barrier, it's going to be amazing. And of course, be truly interested about their products. I have three slides, very short, about what to do when things go wrong. Um, do we have time? <laughs> no. <laughs> OK, three minutes. Um, what happens when clients attack? Clients do go crazy. They, they all of a sudden change the priorities, want new functionalities, or um, something happen in the market. So first of all, avoid that during the entire project. And sometimes you have to adjust to what they, what they need, because sometimes the market does change. But always try to bring them back to the original and show them how things are going to change. Don't be shy. Even if they're very far from you, you need to be shy and be very clear with how things are going to change uh, if the priorities also change. So you, again, you're the expert. You're the, the knowledgeable one. So be, be open and upfront about sharing that information and do it as soon as they break the expectations. As soon as you see that they're starting to change things and becoming weird and out of their path, just do it fast. When you make mistakes, also, super upfront, tell them right away. Don't expect that they're not going to notice. You will feel much better if you tell them right away and you tell them how you're going to solve that. If they don't pay you, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> Before we go into questions, three things. First, um, I'm organizing a workshop uh, for freelancers that are a little bit unmotivated here in Zagreb. Next week, I'm going to be in Novi Sad talking about managing distributed teams. If you manage a team of, of distributed people, you should come. And we have a meetup for freelancers. It's not the Odesk meetup. It's an alternative meetup. We're the cool ones. Uh, <laughs> questions? Raise your hand. Uh, how do you handle clients which have very long response times? For example, they don't give feedback enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You need to, um, for example, if they don't give you feedback, um, you need to ask for it. And uh, I think the best way is to show them always the benefits, why you need that feedback, and to schedule it. And um, like to said, OK, well, I'm going to deliver this to you, and now I need you to answer uh, these questions or tell me how these things went. And try to get them into a, a groove. And the only way I think that you're going to achieve that is if you show them the benefits. What you do when you receive feedback and what you don't do when you don't receive feedback. Be clear about, about this. But if you want, I wrote an article just about how and when to ask feedback. I can send you the link. More questions? Feel free to raise your hand while she's answering the previous one. Sure. Or Sorry. you're all hungry. So I don't need to So no more questions? Lunch, oh, there's one. Uh, if I forget, lunch will be upstairs. So keep in mind that you are the only thing between lunch. Yeah, sure. Hi, so I'll be sure. Just uh, could you recommend any collaboration tools? Collaboration tools. Yes. It really depends on the kind of project that you, that you're dealing with. Um, I like to use Red Booth. I I like uh, Rike, for example. It, it depends on on what you need. Uh, these they work for me. I, I like Trello too, uh, because they're very simple and easy to use. 
but it, I, I would need to know a little bit more about what kind of project, how big your team is, what kind of deliveries you do, but there's so many available. Uh, but these are more like task management tools. Maybe you may like collaboration tools like using whiteboards or... Yeah, everything that's available out there. I would ask you to think, okay, what would I do if I was in an office? I would have a board here, so how can I find that online? If I was in an office, I would have people uh, standing up to do this exercise. Well, do that, even if you're remote. Like, try to convert everything you would do in an office and amplify it, because the difference is much bigger. So better. We do have time for more questions. Feel free to ask the speaker after the talk or during lunch. While you think about your questions, I have these cute cards designed in Zagreb here by my designer, Corona, and they have problems that uh, people have when they're working distributed. So you can come and pick one, like I'm craving a beer with my colleagues because I'm all alone at home, and it, they have like little solutions. So you can come and get some.